Well, let's talk to Nina Scarrow, who's Chief Executive of the Centre for Economics and Business Research. Uh, welcome to the programme, Nina. So everybody uh, expecting this inflation rate to be lower. So what's happened? Well, I, I will say that the consensus forecast was for inflation to drop. We actually were expecting inflation to, to fail to decelerate. So not that surprising. But what I think is really worried, and you've just mentioned there a second ago, is the story on core inflation. And it's probably also part of the reason why some forecasters were wrong on this. So the sort of most volatile element of the overall price rise is what's happening on energy does seem to be dropping off. But we're now seeing signs that inflation has become quite ingrained in the system and that prices of a lot of other items and services in particular have risen and those are going to be trickier to get down. So are uh, more interest rate rises, potentially ongoing interest rate rises now inevitable? There is almost certainly going to be an interest rate rise announced tomorrow. The question is if it's going to be 25 basis points or 50 basis points. I would still like to see from the Bank of England a 25-point basis um, hike. And the reason for that is, is that there is quite a lag between the Bank of England hiking rates and that feeding through, via, particularly via higher mortgage payments, into people constraining their spending, which is the route they're hoping to, to utilize to bring inflation down. So I'm hoping that there isn't going to be sort of a a panicked, panicked move and that the bank will be able to get across its message that they're confident that what they've already done and the interest rates path they've set out is going to be sufficient to bring down inflation, that it's a matter of sort of letting it work its way through the system. Well, let's talk about those mortgage payments. Obviously, the idea is uh, to make them higher and that will, of course, make an already difficult mortgage market uh, impossible for some people, uh, raising real fears of a possible crash. Yes, and this is a particularly tricky situation in the UK, more so than in most European large economies and in the US, which have seen similar levels of interest rate hikes. But what's different in the UK is that people typically have very short fixes on their mortgages, sort of usually two or five years, compared to a lot of European and US markets where it's not atypical to fix your mortgage payments for the duration of the mortgage. So there is probably going to be a very difficult period ahead and in fact between now and the end of 2024 there is still 1.9 million households or 9.1.9 million mortgages that are due to to come off the fix and be renegotiated and it is i mean it's a you know monetary policy is a very sort of bitter pill to to swallow but that is essentially what the bank is counting on and what the government is counting on that the, once that happens people will restrict their expenditure elsewhere and that'll tame inflation so rising inflation uh, rising interest rates uh, it's not working is it has the bank of england got this wrong I think it's very difficult to to look at what the Bank of England has has been doing for the past year, year and a half, and not say that they shouldn't have acted sooner. I think it became clear pretty early on that all of the injection of money from the government into the economy during the pandemic was stirring up inflation. And I think there was a, a long period of many months, a year and a half ago, where the Bank of England should have gently started hiking rates. Now, unfortunately, sort of overcompensating at this point isn't going to help correct that error, which is that they should have started sooner. Nina, good to talk to you. Thank you for joining us today. That's Nina Scarrow from the Centre for Economics and Business Research.